Welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And yes, we're off on a road trip. And actually, the car that should be sat there is the Lotus Amira. When I planned this months ago, that is what I hoped would be here. But unfortunately, um, deliveries on customer cars are slightly delayed, fully understandable of everything that's going on in the world. But we're on a trip down to the south of France and can't take the mirror so we'll take our Jaguar Project 7 which is our sort of default um, family favorite for these sort of road trips I mean we took it out off to Europe last year we had that nightmare didn't we on that road that turned out to be closed and all that off-roading it's just a very easy great car to go and visit the continent on but the first part of this video I'm going to dedicate to an upgrade on the Project 7 I've been meaning to do. And this journey, our little trip, it gives us a very good excuse to do it. And that is to make the sat-nav upgrade it so we have CarPlay. At this era of car, this is 2015, you could play your uh, music, say, from your phone and that sort of thing via a cable, but it didn't have the full sort of CarPlay software in it. Now, there are companies that can retrofit it to this sort of car and wanted to do it. I've ordered up the kit, actually. If you wander over here, I've got the kit here, arrived yesterday. This is the box of tricks here in core. Um, unique developments do it. Um, and this was recommended to me. So in the comments said, I fitted this to my F-Type, works a treat. And I saw, well, did a bit of a Google and he wasn't alone. It seems to be a, a really good bit of kit. And also it's priced around 500 pounds but there's no end of kits. When I went on the website, you can fit this to all sorts of vehicles, all Range Rover, Range Rover Sports, all those sort of cars from 2010, 12 that have a similar system to this, but no way of actually doing car play. Our, all Audis, all BMWs, every BMW you can think of can have this fitted, but then there's some prizes when I started going down the list. Audi R8s, obviously you can do Aventadors, Huracans, um, yeah, it's quite a list of cars. Oh, Maserati, Maserati Ghibli Cots, Quattroport and stuff. So what you get in the box is this. You get, well, a list of what's in the box, instructions, and then um, sort of wiring looms. And I get a bit scared at this sort of stuff, but um, that's how you power it up. And then the very clever box of tricks that does everything, hidden in that sort of special packaging and you need to remove the screen and sort of heater controls and that slots into the center console uh, hidden away and it all goes back and you wouldn't know it had been fitted the only way you do know it's fitted is when you now once it's in uh, press the navigation button and then everything comes to life on apple carplay very clever I'm not going to fit it because I'm very lucky to have Vox of Car Radio down the road from us. They've done lots of work on some various other things. They're very used to fitting this sort of kit. So I'm going to pop down here with this car and get it fitted tomorrow. But I'll just show you where, what's happening on the road trip. I'm going to go into more details um, while, when we get under, underway. But rather than Dover Calais, we're going to do a trip which we did actually in the McLaren uh, GT. We're going to go Portsmouth Carn overnight and that drops you into a different part of France it's a good route into Le Mans we're not going to Le Mans obviously but we're going into the Dordogne down here and I'm going to just show you some roads in this area central area which I know and they're really quite special and not very crowded at all and then on we're just staying um, the boat is just to the um, west of Saint-Tropez so it's a down here this sort of area here, um, born here. Anyway, that's all to follow. First off, get the car down, talk to the car radio, and just see how easy this kit is to fit. Okay, well, the last time you were with me, we were in the garage, and I was taking the car down to Oxford Car Radio, and I didn't actually get a chance to visit them while they fitted the unit, unfortunately, for various reasons, but they've sent me some clips of them doing it, and my goodness, I was very glad I didn't do it myself. You can see it now works and I have come down to Portsmouth via Google Maps. There it is, it's all there. Um, and there's quite a few things I've learned already. I've only used it, this is the first real trip we've done with this car. I'm going this way, I'm not freight. I'm a Project 7. Let's have a look. I don't want to get on the wrong ferry because this is also the ferry here. We're going to Cannes in France, 
but you can also go to Santander like that, St. Marlo. I don't want to go there. Ooh, that's a bit of a worry. I'm just looking, there is Carl up there, so I've calmed down. We are in the right queue after all. Here we are. I'm going to go on this side, I think. Um, and there's quite a lot to learn about this system. It works. Number one, it engages straight away. I'm Bluetooth. I'm actually charged my phone. You can see I'm charging the phone there. It's got the symbol there. I've got the cable in. I can take the cable out and it will still stay up. So it will connect via Bluetooth. But the main thing I've learned, if you do fit one of these systems, it is an alternative. You either use the Jaguar system or the um, CarPlay system. You can't sort of combine. I cannot, if I listen to the radio on the Jaguar system and then try and do navigation, it's silent. I don't get any prompts on the navigation. If I want to listen to the radio and have navigation, as you quite often do in a car, well then I have to use the app, the BBC Sounds. And we've had a very lovely day at Wimbledon, so I'm just catching up and I think Murray's going to go through past the first round, which is great news. But the only way of I can listen to the radio, if I've got the navigation and I want prompts, is on the CarPlay system. The Jaguar system is redundant. So, yeah, that, that was a surprise. On a positive note, it connects straight away. Um, it's very easy, you get all the CarPlay things, but it, think of it as two completely separate systems. I, the, the navigation on the Jaguar is gone, doesn't appear. I cannot get the old map up at all. I can get all the radio, I can get all the phone, but I've got to go back into the Jaguar system to do it, and then I can't get any uh, navigation. Uh, anyway, I'm learning the system, but the positive, it just fits in, you know, it just looks right. Uh, and it's very nice to have all the, you know, prompts here and go here. I've got all this. Yeah, in my 2015 Jaguar F-Type. I will do more updates on the system as we get to, um, to know it, as we go across France, see how it works. But so far pretty pleased but this video now is going to swap over really to our normal road trip we're on the ferry to Cannes we get off at an ungodly hour I think it's 6 45 <laughs> arrives in Cannes so 7 a.m we'll be off into France and you'll join us then and I'll go through what we're going to do which route we're going to go and that sort of thing but at the moment I think we've got to get passports out and show Covid passes and all the rest of it so yeah so far eight out of ten for the car play system might go up to nine out of ten as I learn a bit more about it. Well morning we've just left the ferry a bit of a boring queue for passports but there's quite a lot of traffic um, leaves in the ferry today because it's classic Le Mans this weekend today is um, Tuesday so yeah we're a bit early for it but yeah more things on there I'll just look the good thing if you go that Portsmouth car and you do get kicked off fairly early in the morning it was just after eight o'clock we sort of went into passport control you just look at the navigation I've got Google Maps up on here and if you go the fastest route from Caen to Le Mans if you look at that it's 153 down to Le Mans so two hours and you're in Le Mans so it's a really quick way if you're going to classic Le Mans and if you're in a classic or something like that, it's, I think it's a really good route because you're not actually, you know, having to do that many miles to Le Mans. And you say, well, what's the point? Well, then you can enjoy the journey back and do a different route back, perhaps. Or you can just go very scenic on the way down. We're using an auto route because we've got quite a few miles to do today. So, and the roof is still on. I've just washed the car it got absolutely filthy in the uh, UK with that thunderstorm and stuff but I'm just going to let the roof dry out and crack on I'm going to stop off at the um, circuit Gatti circuit at Le Mans just see what's happening today see if it's all starting to heat up ready for the weekend there is the circuit Okay, Le Mans. We are here. This is classic Le Mans. It's not. It's just getting ready. There's a little one or two people dropping by. Um, I've just been round the museum. Something I've been meaning to do for some time. Each time I come down here, it's quite good, really. It's very varied. There's more sort of road cars in there 
historic road cars, there's some bikes in there, good stories of history, not overloaded, and then some fantastic noughties, noughties, Le Mans cars, and obviously with the French connection there's Matra there, and a big exhibition from Persia, you can tell they're quite big for next year, they're really going to get into this you know, hypercar class 2023, and the centenary. So yeah, I'd say it was well worth it, it's only 10 euros going. I succumbed to the shop, almost to get the bag, I think, yeah, but um, this, is, this is the classic Le Mans t-shirt that I will be modelling over the next few weeks, I suspect, in France. Um, and I, anyway, so that's what I've just done. It's now time, to, I think, to take the roof off the Project 7. But before I do that, I'd quickly show you what's happening. It is, it is quite good just coming down from Khan. Yes, it's a paper map, everyone. Um, so we came into here. What I liked about the ferry, you know, eight o'clock start. We're here. I mean, we've been here some time, at least an hour, so quarter to one. Le Mans is only a sort of couple of hours away, and you can do it on a more scenic route than we um, just did it. But I just wanted to get here. Tour is our next destination, and we go over the map where we're going to go. Limoux here and Fizerat is where we're actually staying tonight. This is the area I want to get into and that's all really for tomorrow. So today's just a little bit of journey. We'll slightly go off piste I think going down to those and towards when we get close to our hotel. This is where we're going to take, go off the auto routes that are so good in France anyway and just start to enjoy rural France. But right now time to take the roof off. This is this medieval town we stayed in last night. Our hotel is the Mercure, just down there. But there's nowhere to park anywhere in this town, really. I tried to park outside the hotel, can't quite do it. But they have a secret car park up the top where you can hide a car overnight. And uh, yeah, as ever, with the Project 7, packing, packing requires soft bags at all times. And uh, I'm, you, you all know I have that sort of poacher's sort of boot tucked up the back, so I've hidden the roof up there as well. Just because I've had this car 70 years, some of you might not know, this world's car number one of the Project 7. There was 250 of them built, and these are all the signatures of the guys who built it, and Paul Newsom over there, sort of head of the programme. But every time I open a boot, it's just a lovely reminder of the history of this car. A bit more about the hotel. I, I always search out, Mercure is a, quite a, an interesting chain of hotels, because they tend to have some quite quirky hotels on the books. They like ancient buildings that they've managed to return to a modern way and into hotels and just been repurposed and this is a really good example of that. Medieval sort of twisting, all sorts of elements, centre courtyard and then these funny walkways to the rooms and it just gives you this vista over this sort of lovely courtyard garden and the um, topiary etc actually within the structure. There's even a swimming pool up the, up, up the top. You would not expect to see a swimming pool there. But anyway, today um, we're heading down to the coast, but there's a couple of areas. If you just want to wander around here, I'll just get the map out, show you what we did. Yeah, so where are we? Fijak is there, you can see on the map there. We actually dropped down from Le Mans. I'm not going to open up the map, but uh, we aim for Perigord here. It's always bigger than you think, France, and um, yeah, it, it, they were okay roads, but not the best. We actually dropped in Rocamadour. Now, the Rocamadour was quite an amazing sort of village that's actually into the hillside. They actually built into the hillside. It's a real tourist honeypot, but uh, it is quite an amazing area. And then we came down to Frijac here. What I want to do today is actually go to Mulau. Now, we've been to Mulau. This is the famous viaduct is here, Norman Foster design. But I actually think 
the best sight of the bar duck is actually from underneath. And I just want to show you some of the crazy roads in this region here. These gorges de Tarn, etc. There's some really special roads in here. And after that, we're then heading off to the coast because our end destination today, sorry about the diesel truck behind, our end destination tonight is just here. We're going to the Lavendor. There's a bore, so can't, it's not actually on here, but we've got a marina. That's where we're meeting a boat, and then we're going to spend a week down here. Slight chaos because we're blocking the square, but um, it's a beautiful day. It's well, quarter to 11, we need to crack on. It's about two hours to Malau from here. way to Malau, we're on the, the sort of D29, we're not using the auto route to get to Malau because I don't want to be on the viaduct itself, I want to be underneath it. So fortunately Google Maps is actually taking it, us in a really nice route, it's the D29 we're on now, just a flowing road, twists and turns and yeah really quite nice road. But what I want to do as I say is to get underneath the viaduct and just have another look at those sort of columns going up but I'm enjoying this this is a good car to punt down this road temperature is 23 degrees and all is good This is the little base road, this is the road you want to find. So D41 coming out of Milau and that takes you to underneath the actual Vardo itself. It basically just follows the river valley at the bottom. So you're at the bottom of the gorge now. It just takes a little bit of finding though. But I think it's worth it. here if you just look up you'll see what I'm looking at up there <laughs> and there it is and it just shoots across the valley here over that side I mean it's just spectacular and just how there's no sound of the road there's no nothing and here we are at the bottom of the valley beautiful valley you need no, nothing of it when you're actually on it but you're right up there we can just go back as a turn in to the left which I've gone past and then we can actually go to a base of one of these columns but I think this is the tall, it's either this one's the tallest or the one over there but yeah really special fighting crickets in the background, a typical sort of south of France sound, but we are standing now under the Milau Bridge. This is the sort of pillar you can actually look at. But um, yeah, if you look, come down here, what always gets me about it, you can sort of see the curve as it dives into that hillside there. Apologies, I am slightly obsessed with Norman Foster and his designs. I think he's an absolute genius and the whole team around him, some of the designs they've done in modern architecture are just a statements of uh, design that British should be very proud of, in my view. Um, so what now, we've spent too much time looking at bridges and sightseeing and having that really quite nice road across. So I'm unfortunately going to have to abandon what I wanted to show you, which was some of the gorges up the top and coming out of Malau. There's a gorge up here, this Gorge de Tarn. Is, if you're in this area, just have a look at some of these gorges. They're sort of cut into the hillside. There's lots of sort of rock tunnels. Fun time to stay around here. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to do it. So I'm going to dive down to Montpellier auto route and go where we're meeting the boat tonight and um, yeah, park up. So it's still about five, six hours. 
but it's auto route all the way. So right, we've done about 350 miles, I think, since we've been out of our ducks. I'm at 945 miles completed for this journey. Um, the bit I can't understand, I sh this was not all in the aid of economy, etc. But 29.9 mpg this thing's done on the way down here. Don't get that. Friends followed me, he's in a 991 uh, 911 GTS and he put in 48 litres at the last filler, I put 55 litres. He's, his readout is saying 32 mpg. Pretty amazing these sort of modern performance cars with their sort of long gears. When you we're bombing down the auto route at 135 ish on indicated, probably at 130 real. But yeah, with the plan now, we're actually meeting, I say, the boat down here. Friend has very kindly offered to lock the cars away for the week we're on board. Basically, we're on holiday for the next week. Um, I'm gutted we didn't actually do that road on the way down here that I wanted to show you. So we'll do road, I think, on the way home rather than ending the video here. It's just lovely down here. It's been lovely with the soft top, the crickets going in here, them in the trees as you drive along. There's just the smell of the pines down here. It will seem 35 degrees. I think it's a little cooler at the moment. It's uh, dropped to 28 degrees, but it is yeah, 10 past seven in the evening. So yeah, probably a bottle of rosé is going to come out and things like that. But um, yeah, you'll be joining us after a week on the boat. And we'll just do another road flying back to the UK. Well, after a week away enjoying the sun of the south of France on the boat, we're back on it. And I'm now on those roads. I hope to show you after the Moulau, we just ran out of time to do this road. I'm on something, the road called D7. I just want to show you on the map where we are. I just wanted to show this particular area we're in, which is this area on the map. I, uh, Ailes, Moulau was there, there's that. And it's sort of a forgotten little corner of France but really well worth doing because the roads are terrific around here. You've got this vast sort of forested area and it's a quiet corner of France compared to going over to the Alps, etc. And there's some cracking roads. You just come up a road, this is D7. Um, you just go into the woods and it's quiet. We came out here, it's, uh, Saint Jean du Gard. Apologies for any accident, everybody's gonna get upset, but it, you went off the D907 onto the D9, and this is the road we've been following up to Florac there, and I want then to go down this Gorge de Tyrin as well. So those are the two roads I just want to do on this journey and just rediscover. We did them years ago in that SL600 we used to keep in France, but I've never done it in a proper angry animal like the Project 7. So that's what we're doing here. But uh, yeah, look at the vastness. It, France is just spoilt with these sort of brilliant driving roads. I know everybody charges off to the Alps and they're terrific, absolutely terrific. But it's always worth in France just discovering little areas, hidden areas, because France is blessed with these sort of areas that are just great driving roads. Let's head down further down this D9 and just go on to this Gorge du Tarn. Across lorries just inching their way past this rock face. I don't know how they got through and occasional RVs and things. And then sometimes the road is pretty frustrating, pretty narrow, 
but at all times it's scenic. There are lots of other roads in this area. I've just given you a taste so that you know, D7 is a re really good driving road. This uh, Gorge of Tarn is extremely scenic. Uh, but don't bring a big wide supercar down here. Just two wheels, they're preferable, but uh, yeah, a little narrow sports car, classic, whatever. It's just a great different sort of area to the rest of the France that have all just dashing off to the house as I said before. Just a little bit um, about the navigation system and this adding this car plane. We've used it a lot, um, but I can continue to give it 8 out of 10 just because it prevents you sort of using the, the Jaguar a bit. So the Jag, as I said before, Jag um, navigation disappears. That's no great loss. But also the hands-free goes as well and your reliance on the Unicor hands-free and it's not as good as the Jaguar system. And I keep finding I actually have to turn off the Bluetooth connection to the, to the Jaguar and just rely on the one to the in-call system. I didn't, I didn't realise that, but for having modern, up-to-date navigation, it's great uh, to have that and it does update your car. So it's a choice. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's really useful on this drive and just skirting past the traffic and not having to rely on an old system as we all know. They date very quickly car systems. Um, Project 7 V8 does amazing MPG, it's practical I think. We, we hide all the roof, as you know I've got that smuggler's boot where the uh, electric roof used to live on a uh, F-Type. And I've also I put the windows, the back windows and stuff, fit very neatly behind the passenger seat. So that's how I get around the luggage issues with Project 7 Hammer's smallish boot. Um, but yeah, we're going to enjoy the rest of this trip, but I hope you enjoy this journey into France and just a little bit of um, sort of scenic tour, a different area for you to explore if you ever want to do a you know car tour over the next few months or years. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming on very soon.